The other day I was scrolling down Superbase's landing page when I came across this interaction. There was something satisfying about moving my cursor around an image that lights up along its edges in a very subtle way. Then when we move the mouse away from the card, the stroke of the SVG dims. I could not get this interaction out of my head and after seeing it, I had to recreate it, which is exactly what today's video will be about. We'll be applying the same effect on a different SVG. When our mouse moves onto the card, the stroke of the SVG will light up, and as we move it around, an emerald glow will follow the cursor, only affecting the stroke of the SVG. Now yes, we will be dealing with SVGs, which is something that some of you may be new to. However, I hope that this tutorial will provide you with a baseline understanding of how to take advantage when working with colors and SVGs in your own sites. In order to bring this to life, I'm going to go with React.js and Tailwind CSS. However, the underlying logic can also be applied to other web frameworks or vanilla JavaScript applications. But before we continue, I've created a job board for those of you who are looking for a career in web development. This site lists open positions with their salaries. If this interests you, then visit webdevjobs.io and sign up to the newsletter to get jobs sent straight into your inbox. Right, so to begin with, we can go ahead and set up the React project. To do that, jump into a directory of your choosing and run npm create vite at latest. Provide it with a name, then select React, TypeScript, and once done, cd into the project and run npm install. Next, we can install Tailwind CSS by running npm install dash d Tailwind CSS post CSS and auto prefixer. Then initialize it by using the command npx Tailwind CSS init dash p. We will then need to install Hero Icons React as we'll also be making use of a couple of the icons from that library. With the installations out of the way, we can jump into the project. The first thing we need to do is adjust the Tailwind config content property to hold the following. This can also be found within the Tailwind docs, which I've added in the description below. Then we can delete app.css and inside of index.css, add Tailwind base, Tailwind components and Tailwind utilities. As for the body, we can just apply a background of neutral 900. We'll be making use of Poppins. So head over to Google font site and search for Poppins. Click on the result and then on the button, get font. You should see the top code snippet, which you can copy and inside of the index.html file within the head tags, you can paste it. To make the font accessible within Tailwind, inside of the Tailwind config file, we can extend the font family to include Poppins with the array Poppins and sans serif. Now it's time for us to implement. Within the app.tsx file, delete everything and create an app component that returns a main tag holding a section tag which holds a div tag and then export default the component. For the main tag, we can give that a class name of width full, the screen's height, flex, place item center and justify center. This will place our section within the horizontal and vertical center of the page. Then for the section, we can give that a class of card. This will be a pretty long list of classes so we can define them within the index.css file. So inside of the CSS file, define the card class and apply a width of 44 rem, a height of 26 rem, a background neutral of 800, rounded radius of large, border with a color of neutral 600, flex, flex row, padding of eight, absolute, justify between, stroke 0.1 and stroke 0.2 on hover. The reason why we are placing the stroke here is because we want the stroke of the SVG to change once the cursor is on the card, rather than when it is on the SVG itself. If we go ahead and run this, you should see in the middle of our browser, a dark neutral card in the middle of the page. Let's now add some content. Inside of the project for the div, we can give it the classes flex, flex column, a width of two over five and justify between. Inside of that div, we can add another one with the class names flex, flex column, and a gap of five. Here we can add the component circle stack icon from hero icons 24 outline, which has been imported for me automatically. Then the class names width 14, rounded large, a background neutral of 950 over 70, stroke emerald 500, a padding of two, and an inner shadow, which just gives it a nice touch. Underneath that, a h1 tag holding the value database with a class name font poppins, text neutral 200, tracking wide, and text 2xl. And yes, we can just reuse the text found on the Superbase website as I am lacking some originality. Anyway, underneath the h1 tag, we can include a paragraph tag that holds one sentence with the class names minus margin 2 on the top, font poppins, text neutral 500, and tracking wide. 
Underneath the div that holds the icon, h1 and paragraph tag, we can add in another div tag with the classes flex, flex column, font poppins, text neutral 200 and tracking wide. Here we can add a span tag with the class names flex, flex row and a gap of two. Within that, a check icon from hero icons with a class name of width five. Next to it, some text within a paragraph tag. We can copy and paste twice underneath and just change the text within the paragraph tags. If we check it all out in the browser, we can see that the content is bringing the card to life. Let's now start working on our SVG and apply some magic. Between the div and the section tag at the bottom, add in another div tag with the class names of width, three over five, flex, flex column, and place item center. This is where we will be placing our SVG. For the SVG, we can shop around the Hero Icons website. Here we have access to quite a few open source SVGs, such as an ant or a calendar. However, I'm going to go ahead and search for the flame. Once selected, click on copy JSX, and then back inside of the project, create a new directory within source called components. Then within that, a file called flame.tsx. Here we can create a component called flame and then return the JSX we just copied from Hero Icons. At the bottom of the file, we can export default the component. Now, one important thing to note is that the SVG has a view box of 0, 0, 24 and 24. The view box attribute just defines the coordinate system and dimensions of the SVG viewport. In our case, this means that the SVG viewport covers an area of 24 by 24 units, with the origin being 0, 0 at the top left corner. If you're using a different SVG that does not have this, you may need to tweak some of the values we later use for the outline effect. Anyway, there are some attributes that we don't need, so we can remove the stroke, stroke width and fill. The reason why we no longer need the stroke width is because earlier on we defined it within the card class, so that it has a width of 0.2 on hover and 0.1 otherwise. For the class name in the SVG, we can adjust it so that it has a width of 96, a height of 96, duration 200 and transition all. This is to ensure the smooth changes between the stroke size from hover. Back inside of the app.tsx file, we can add it within the div we last created. Back in the browser, we can see the silhouette of our SVG, close to the end result, but not close enough. We can start by changing the fills of our paths. For the top path, we can give that a fill of neutral 950 over 50. As for the second one, a fill of neutral 800 over 50. If we preview this, we can already see some definition being applied to the flame. Now for the stroke. Above our paths, we can add the deaths tag. This tag is used to store graphical objects that can be used within an SVG image. And the graphical object that we will use is a radial gradient. We can give that an ID of emerald gradient and then add our colors. To define the colors, we can use a stop element. This just specifies where the gradient stop is placed along the gradient vector. In this case, we can give it an emerald green color defined with the hex value 10B981. Now, whenever we use a def tag, we have to assign it in order to make use of it. So within both of the paths, we can associate the stroke to it by writing URL and then within parentheses, pass in the ID of the radial gradient. We can then copy it and paste it within the second path also. If we go and preview this, we can see how the entire stroke of the flame is now emerald. The reason why there is no radial gradient is because we only have one stop tag. Let's go back and add in a second one and set offset to be one. This will define where the gradient stop position is along the gradient vector. Then for the stop color, we can set that to 40, 40, 40, which is a neutral 700 color. If we go back now, we can see an emerald highlight on the top left of the SVG. We also need to change the coordinate system of the gradient so that they are specified in the user coordinate system. This will just make it easier for us to move the gradient around without having to do too much math. Inside of the radial gradient tag, we can set gradient units to be user space on use. When we go back, we can see how the gradient has been shifted to the center of the SVG. Another thing to know is that when our cursor hovers over it, you can see the stroke transition in and out of a different width. We next need to introduce the CX and CY attributes with CX set to 50% and CY set to 50%. What these values represent are the center points of the gradient, which we will need to utilize in order for our gradient to move with our cursor. 
By default, these values are already 50%, which we can tell as a gradient remains in the same place. If we adjust CX to be 30%, we can see how the gradient has shifted left along the x-axis. And if we set it to 90%, it moves right along the x-axis. If we set CX back to 50% and then change CY to 80%, it moves down the Y, whereas with 30%, it moves up. With this information, we can start to get an idea of how the cursor position will change the center of the gradient. We just need to figure out a way of converting our cursor coordinates into percentage values. Now, back inside of app.tsx, we can create a ref called card ref and set that to a use ref hook, which has automatically been imported for me. The type for this will be HTML element with default set to null. Then underneath, we can create a use state, which will track the X and Y coordinates of the cursor. Then take out cursor as a state and set cursor as a set function. We then need a function that will update the cursor coordinates as the mouse moves over the card. We can define handle mouse move, which takes in an event as an argument that is of type react mouse event HTML element mouse event. Then we can say that if the cards ref dot current is not null, then retrieve the bounding rectangle of the reference element, which will be the card. This method will return an object containing the size and position of the element relative to the viewport. Then we can say that x is equal to the x coordinate of the cursor relative to the left corner of the card, and y is equal to the y coordinate of the cursor relative to the top of the card. Finally, we can pass these values to the set cursor function. Then for the section that is the card, we can set ref to be the card's ref and the on mouse move to be associated with handle mouse move where we pass in the event. Back down where we have the flame SVG, we can pass the props cursor and card ref. Then let the flame component know that it should expect these props. Inside of the flame.tsx file, we can define the props interface where the cursor is an object of X and Y, both being numbers, and card ref is a ref object holding HTML element. The type ref object has automatically been imported for me, then pass these values as props into the component. Within the flame component, we can create a use state that will hold the values for the center of the gradient. By default, we can set CX and CY to be 50%. Then a use effect that listens to changes on both the cursor and card ref. We can write an if statement that checks to ensure that card ref current is not null and that both the X and Y on the cursor do not equal null. To be honest, the cursor check could be left out. But anyway, here we have it. We can then get the bounding rectangle of the card by calling card ref current get bounding client rect and then say that CX percentage equals the cursor's X coordinate divided by the card's width multiplied by 100. And then for the CY percentage, that can equal the cursor's Y position divided by the card's height multiplied by 100. The reason why we have defined this here and not in the app.tsx file is because of separation of concerns. Then finally, call set gradient center and set CX and CY to be the ones that we just defined as percentage values. Back down in our radial gradients, we can set the CX value to be gradient center dot CX and for CY to be gradient center dot CY. If we go and preview this, we can see now that our gradient is moving along with our cursor once it enters the card. However, to get a more super base like effect, we can adjust the X value slightly so that it fades before we leave the card on the left. To do that, back in the use effect, we can offset the CX position by minus 24. Now it's a bit more faded when our cursor is on the absolute left of the card. We can also make another change, and that is to shrink the radius so that the gradient is a bit more subtle. To do that, we can assign the R value in the radial gradient to be 35%, which results in the gradient in being not as strong as before. Our hover gradient is really coming to life. The last thing we need to do is ensure that once the cursor has left the card that the emerald gradient is no longer there. To do that, we need to have something that checks if the cursor is on the card. Inside of the flame components props interface, we can add another one called mouse on card, which will be a boolean and then pass that in within the props object. Then back within the radial gradient where we have the first stop color, we can say that if the mouse on card state is true, then render the stop. Then inside of the app.tsx file, we can create another use state with mouse on card and set mouse on card with default set to false. 
Down inside of the section, we can set the on mouse enter to call the set mouse card, which will take in true as an argument. And for on mouse leave, we can call set mouse card with false as the parameter. The final step is to then pass in the state to the flame component where mouse on card equals mouse on card. Now we have the desired outcome. When the mouse enters the card, the stroke lights up with an emerald green gradient and follows our cursor's position and then dims when we leave it, similar to how it is done on the Superbase landing page. You can also go ahead and try this with different SVGs and colors and see what you get. If you found this tutorial insightful, then please share what you end up creating within the Discord server that I have linked below. Anyway, leave a like and subscribe, and as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video.